Hello everybody, I hope you're all very well. Thanks very much for tuning in. Today is a good day. We are going to start veggie sausage sandwich. Oh yes we are. And uh, I'm going to have to... Honestly, sometimes it's like living in prison. The fight for food is real in this house. I'm sure you're not going to be excited about corn. No. And, uh, yeah, so a good times ahead. And guess what else I did? <laughs> She's devastated. She can't believe I tricked her so badly. It's not meat. This is not meat. It's corn, love. Got it. <laughs> Gone. <laughs> well, she's back and she's clearly had something to eat. But it wasn't a bit of corn sausage. <laughs> Mine's all gone. I was just sitting here thinking about the uh, video I was going to make for you today and I realised that I don't want to do it, I want to do something else. But it depends on three things that I saw in a charity shop on Monday that I put back. I can absolutely guarantee if I think about it for two minutes and then put it back, I'm going to regret it. So I should have just bought them. So I'm going to finish this cup of tea and then I'm going to uh, leg it down there, see if they're still there. Wish me luck. See you in a sec. Hi, I'm back. It's the next day. It was a complete, total failure. Obviously, all three were gone. That was just in like a day and a half. Um, I'm not going to lie, I was really a bit miserable about it. And I even got the manageress to go and have a look in the back. She was happy to do that. But no, she remembered one of the jackets. Gone. Sold. Got it. This is why, oh, just if you see it, buy it. They were like three quid. Oh, what is it that stops me? Um... I don't know, what is it that stops you when you're sort of, you've got it in your hand, you've been staring at it for about 10 minutes. <laughs> and then you go, no, I'll just put that back. <laughs> Why? Why? Oh, idiot. So I was a bit deflated and uh, determined not to go home as a failure. So I, I, off I went. I, I kind of ventured out into the um, outreaches of the bleak northern towns and uh, I did a little bit of a recce around one of them and again total fail complete washout wipeout I'd literally got nothing I'd bought nothing couldn't find anything and by this point I was uh, determined to buy something so I um I went back to one of the shops that I'd already gone through and uh I picked out a dress that I thought I might wear, but that wasn't really what I was in the mood for. I was in the mood to find something vintage to add to the collection to talk to you about. And the plan was to do coats and jackets and style them up. So as I was standing at the corner of the bar, like some sad, lonely barfly in the Last Chance Saloon, which happened to be the Salvation Army, <laughs> in a shut down prefabricated town, in the rain in January. I uh, had a dress in my hand and I just thought, oh, what's that? What's that on the end? And right on the end of the rail, sort of it was pressed up against the window, which is the point where no one really goes. I, uh, I saw this. It was just, I just saw that. Just that bit of gray shoulder that I thought, was like a mass-produced worn out old next jacket and I thought why is that in the dress rail um, and sometimes this particular charity shop has a selection of uh, vintage clothes often vintage dealers who either offload their unsold gear or shut down pass it on in bulk to that shop in particular so it was it was also in the section that's like a size six really really small so what's the point in going there so I picked it up and had a look. Well, still not that exciting, is it? 
and it still looks like it should be one pound outside on the rail that's like by us before we get binned and how much 15 pounds why oh that's why i see said it before i'm absolutely not a label person i'm not interested in the high value of things i'm not interested in gold or silver i'm interested in the story the history the style what was going on in the world at that time and whenever i see anything that's designer in the charity shops never for one second do i think it's genuine i always 100 percent think don't touch it it'll be fake and even if it isn't fake you'll never know and uh, I'm not an authenticator I'm not an expert on them um, authenticating but for some reason I just I couldn't let go of this look I've got a tech <laughs> it was kind of just saying you know there's more to me than meets the eye I shouldn't be here I've got I've had a life I've got a story buy me buy me buy me and I, I was not in the mood to spend 15 quid on a plain old grey jacket but I just thought, no, something's going on, buy it and uh, get it home and just sit and stare at it for a while, see what happens. I also have a little rule where if I'm still unconvinced, try it on. Because sometimes things that don't look that great just on the hanger are suddenly transformed and brought to life when you try them on and you realise, uh, special. Um, so I tried it on and I thought, oh yeah, there's something about this, definitely. Then I did it up and it all became crystal clear. Yeah, of course. Um, totally genuine. I am 98% convinced. I could be, I could, I mean, I could be wrong, obviously, but I'm pretty sure I'm not. But it doesn't matter. It's not for sale. It's going into my collection. And it just brought back a flood of memories from the 80s when I was at art school. I used to wear a sort of skinny, they call them bodycon now, but it was like a really tight sort of lycra, panelled little black dress sort of like a long corset you know and uh, with a huge big boxy grey jacket over the top and uh, uh, platform shoes which I, let me tell you in the 80s platform shoes were not generally acceptable in the wider society <laughs> I used to pull my hair back and uh, wear the red lipstick and a big sort of boxy chunky uh, cuff bracelet and I mean, at the time I just wore it and uh, uh, suffered with uh, with the consequences. But now thinking back on it, oh, I must have looked fantastic. <laughs> um, yeah, so anyway, look, that is a moment in history. I did a, I did a bit of a quick Google. I uh, researched the history of Dolce Gabbana and I am completely aware of the um, controversy surrounding that company i'm not going to say anything because uh the, they are currently in litigation with some other style bloggers from america who um who made comments on their behavior and uh, I, I don't really feel like getting involved in that so you probably already know if you don't it's definitely worth a quick google uh, just to find out what sort of um company they are and what the what the what the men are like uh however we're talking about style and history and a moment and that time those 80s the late 80s sort of 89 um 88 89 it was all about Linda Vagelista, Naomi Campbell, Cindy Crawford, Claudia Schiffer they were just the most powerful things I say things because it was like a thing. It was just like a fashion style revolution. It was so electric. It was so bright. Even though it was grey, it was bright. It was just really exciting. And uh, when I was researching Dolce and Gabbana, I found out that in 1988, they um, they sort of created a, a ready to wear set. And I believe this is from that, and it was produced from one of their father's fashion factory uh, in Italy. And I believe it's 
the I don't know if I'm saying it right SPA spa um, I'll show you the label inside but this was a particular range and it's still incredibly well tailored it's held up extremely well it's beautifully lined it's beautifully stitched it does have some age related wear there's some sort of rippling but um, as a piece it just screams that time and uh, when I realized what it was and I sort of started going through my old magazines and my old memories uh, I just thought okay we're doing suits so I've been through my collection I've dug them all out and I've picked out a collection of vintage suits that I've been sort of gathering and hunter, hunter gathering uh, over the last five years since I've been in, back in England and I'm just going to give you a little suit fashion show vintage suit fashion show and just imagine those suits as women I give characters to almost every item I buy every clothes item I buy because it just they just come alive when you put them on the mannequin so here we go again just before we go <laughs> I've picked out one of my magazines I've been through my vintage stash of magazines go over that um from 1986 and that was the year I went to art school and um this was the um, room work for Versace, this couture look, this kind of huge, big, power-shouldered, tapered um, jacket, which could be worn as a dress, or um, in this case, over the black polo and black pencil skirt. That sort of developed into being just slightly less nipped in at the waist, and it became boxy, and um, that was just like the most gorgeous look I wore I just wore it and wore it I felt fabulous anyway this time here we go suits fashion show <coughs> hello <laughs> this this does look like it's never been worn. I don't know why. <laughs> it's literally made of foil. It, if it's metal, it feels like foil. <laughs> do not go near a lit cigarette, whatever you do. Not if you want to live. It's absolutely fantastic. And look, I've got my new lights on. That's only one of them in there. I think that's enough. <laughs> How joyous is that? Totally 70s. Um, that's good at all. Look at the puff. Look at the shoulder pads. Look at the peplum. Look at the pencil. <laughs> oh my God. I wonder if Gloria wore this in her younger days. Oh, it's got Gloria written all over it, hasn't it? It's not even like ridiculously tiny. It's at least a 12. It could possibly fit a slim, small 14. Oh my God. It's amazing. I can't remember where I bought it. Um, charity shop. Not a vintage job, so it was out there in the wild. It was definitely a fresh pick. And, uh, I mean, it's just absolutely joyous. I'll give you a closer look at the fabric. Oof. It's got a little button in there to keep it all in. Unless you want it out, of course. <laughs> oh, it's heaven. It's absolutely divine. It's like a quality street wrapper. Oh, God. Designed by Domino. I told you, it's 60% metallic. That's 60% metal. <laughs> and the rest is nylon. I and from the ridiculous to the sublime, I mean, it's so near yet so far. It's exquisite and magnificent. This is 100% pure silk. I believe it is Thai, uh, but let me double check that on the labels. But oh my God, it's a three piece a suit, not sweet. Um, in a shimmering peacock blue tea it moves before your eyes it's absolutely amazing 
I do actually fit this. Um, but cometh the day where I have an occasion worthy of wearing it. <sighs> oh, I, I, oh my God. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? Let me try it without the, um, I've got my new light bulb. Is it better? No, it's better with them on, I think. But, oh. Look at you. Look at you. Just while I'm sat down gazing at it in complete awe and devotion. That, the length of that skirt is like, that is the premium skirt length. That is the length. That, oh. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> right, next. Just before next, I found it in a charity shop. I think it was about eight pounds. They're always about eight pounds. It seems like a standard price for a suit. Um, best garment. There we go. Oh yeah, Thailand. I would put this at 80s, early 80s. And I think someone, some fabulous woman has obviously gone to Thailand on holiday, bought it, cherished it, adored it. Maybe worn it once and then just protected it so so well. Um, I hope I do it justice. It's just like water. It really is like liquid. It shimmers to the naked eye. Um, there is some slight, not disintegration or um, tears or anything like that. But there are some age-related little marks sort of in the colour so I'm going to get that back into a freezer bag as quick as I can and out of daylight and out of my clammy little hands <laughs> there it is I found it so there are little patches like this this is the worst part and it's not really that noticeable but it's noticeable enough um, and there are other tiny little patches like that round about the top so um, I don't know if it's light damage or if it's just from something touching it but I'm going to protect it. This one is especially made for Hannah jeans. <laughs> so the label says, um, a spectacular cerise colour. It's that sort of wool crepe, a uh, lovely material, fully lined skirt and jacket, and with a fabulous applique bow design at the front, a bit of piping as well. Um, for a long time, I was just fundamentally horrified and repulsed by this style of suit for very good reason um just someone i used to know really really embraced this look um but got rid of them and now i can embrace this look myself uh i'm free of that so i uh, yeah this one actually looks much better on the body than it does on the mannequin it's a bit bigger than uh the mannequin mannequins are size 10 to 12 um so if you're a bit sort of um, fuller in the shape, like a 14 uh, or a small 16, this suit absolutely locks the business because uh, it just really gives it oomph. I love it. I love it. I love it. Do you know what? I might wear this. I might wear this out thrifted. <laughs> oh, I'd love to see the faces of all my mates that run the shops when I walk in in this. <laughs> I definitely wear it with stiletto long knee boots, <laughs> black stiletto boots on it. <laughs> okay, I guarantee every single one of them would say, "Where's your bomber jacket?" <laughs> and I would say, "It is resting." <laughs> oh, brilliant! Okay, next one. I'm sorry, I had that wrong. This is that this says specially made for Hannah Fiennes, ten sixty six. Hannah Fiennes. Right, let's have a Google. No, um, obviously, Hannah Fiennes, the fashion designer, has probably retired or expired. Uh, but now the only Hannah Fiennes I can see is a singer, songwriter, or a journalist. So um, this was from a charity shop and it was £8. This, my friends, is one of my favourite finds and also one of my greatest finds. I know you sat there thinking, really? 
Why? I'll tell you why. Because I used to go to a charity shop out in the fields and uh, they had a bin at the back, like a big, I've talked about this before, like a big um, industrial clothes bin, you know, one of those big blue ones on wheels, huge thing that you could fall in and not be able to get out again. But they had it in the back of the shop. It wasn't a big shop, but it was just in the back and they used to throw things out the back over your head into this bin that um that they just couldn't sell or they thought wasn't worthy of putting out and uh th i mean that's exciting in itself because their price for everything else that was hanging up and selected in the shop was at 99 pence <laughs> so whatever didn't make the 99 pence grade got flung in the bin <laughs> and you used to have to dig through it and it was three for 99 pence. So everything was 33 pence each. But you had to buy a three, obviously. And honestly, that's the only reason I went. I wasn't bothered about the money. It was just about the fun and the thrill of digging in the bin. Oh my God, I used to live for it. I used to go every Friday. And uh, oh, it, honestly, it was so much fun. The laughs I've had around that bin with other women, like all of us just like, Ferret and snout down, tails up, having a riot was nobody's business. Joyous. And then one day, bid was gone. Can't even talk about it. I don't know for sure. I didn't ask. It's too painful to ask. But I am sure that some new manager came in and said, we can't have a bin in the shop. You get rid of it. I don't know this for sure, but surely that's what happened. Anyway, in the glory days of the bin, of the free and happy glory days of bin diving. <laughs> they call it dumpster diving in America, don't they? I love those videos. We, we have the dumpsters in the shops in England. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, my God. Brilliant. Oh, no shame. Absolutely shameless. Anyway. It's all clean. They're like clean. Oh, anyway, no, they're bins. <laughs> <laughs> so one day I was like all excited. I got to the shop, marched straight to the back where the big bin was and uh, started rooting around. I touched a cuff. <laughs> if you pardon the expression. And I knew straight away that I was onto something nice. It felt quality. It didn't feel like, you know, something that had just been slung out of a factory and then you know was single fashion wear so i started pulling on this cuff and uh oh god out came this jacket i couldn't believe my eyes literally stood there hugging it thinking this can't be right this can't be real seriously and i thought oh my god that's incredible i can't believe what a lucky woman i am to find this and the condition just looked amazing it looked unworn it felt unworn i thought this oh my god this like never happens i deserve this i deserve this win <laughs> and when i was standing there thinking at how much i deserved it and what a fantastically brilliant person i was i saw another bit of the same fabric knotted up in the bottom i thought no stop it i can't be this good a person <laughs> Clearly I was, pulled out this rag of um, just like twisted up fabric, matching skirt, shut that door. A suit, uh, there it was, the suit, and not just any old suit, vintage aquascutum suit, oh yes it is, my god, aquascutum, it's like Burberry. They started at the same time, very similar styles, same high-end quality. For some reason, Burberry went stratospheric. Aquascutum didn't happen for them. Just didn't happen for them. However, the items are a phenomenon, phenomenon, phenomenon. We're talking like high-end luxury item here. This is a proper suit. And it's the full... Miss Jean Brody. I'll give you a closer look. Look at that finish. These buttons look like they are 
shell, possibly. Cute. And look at this seam. Look at that. The tailoring, the engineering, the structure, the fabric is exquisite. Proper pocket. Um, box pleat skirt. There she blows. Look at that seam. Seriously. I mean, I, I don't know how it's even... I don't know how they even make it. Is that double stitched on there? Yeah. <laughs> this seam is double stitched down each side of the pleat there. It's just divine. It feels amazing. It feels just the money and uh, the quality. So, yeah. I know you might think it's a bit sort of, you know, old lady-ish. But old lady vogue is it, baby. There we are. So, for the full price of 66 pence, <laughs> we got an aqua scoot some mint fire suit. There we are. And do you know what? It has a sort of mustard um tone in the check and if you wore that with suede long mustard boots everyone would know you're somebody you must get some mustard boots right okay High-end, but not quite as high-end as the Aqua Scootum, but I've got this stunning Planet 2 piece suit, and it's a skirt and blouse. I would date it to the 70s. I'd also date that Aqua Scootum suit to very possibly late 70s, early mid 80s. Um, I absolutely adore this suit, and I'll show you what happens when you tra you just transform it with one thing. It's fabulous anyway, but then you do something to it. And it just takes it into a whole a different league. Hang on. I mean, absolutely gorgeous. Monochrome black and white paisley print. Two-piece with like a button-down, flat, well, double button-down flat mandarin collar uh, and blouse. And that skirt is pleated and it's got pockets. We know the joy of pockets. Uh, so you can have your um, revolution leaflets uh, stashed away in the private. Um, so yeah, it's absolutely beautiful. And do you know what? When I was putting it on the mannequin, I was just transported back to memories of my nana dressing me when I was really little. And you know those days when you used to have to tuck your blouse in to a gathered skirt and your mum or your nana would be constantly sort of rustling under your skirt and kind of pulling your blouse down underneath. <laughs> <laughs> to work. Nah, nah. <laughs> Where's your blouse? Oh, we just it up. <laughs> Fun. Uh, so, right, okay, let me do this magic little trick. Are you going to come down? Are you coming downstairs? See the suits? No? Are you going to stay here today? I'm going to watch the birds. Okay. Et voila, I'm out of breath from running up the stairs. <sighs> Amazing. It takes, it takes it into a different league. Uh, this belt is vintage Topshop, but it's um, 90s revival vintage. Casually being fabulous with your hands in your pockets. This is how I store all my vintage clothes in a freezer bag. Um, it keeps everything out and it keeps everything in just in case it's got moth or something like that. Um, but I always wash everything I buy straight away as soon as it comes in the house uh, through the machine uh, unless it's extremely specialist. And then I just put it in the freezer bag and then hope, hope and plan for one day that I'll take it to the dry cleaners. Um, yeah, so when I was up getting the belt for the uh, Planet 2 piece suit, I forgot. Um, I have this suit as well, which is just amazing. It looks absolutely nothing until you put it on. It's one of them.
so creased from the bag. It still looks terrible, just like that on the mannequin. But trust me, when it's on the body, it's fabulous. I'm just going to put it back in the bag. But first of all, I'm going to show you this. Lovely bit of engineering there. Bit of piping. Nice little in and out. Next one's good because it's an absolute classic. Look at this brand, Richards. Do you remember Richards Shops? Uh, it's seen a bit of action. It's in not bad condition, actually. I do have it listed for sale. It's bright canary yellow and it's looking really strange on my camera. Look, my hand's gone blue. Um, can't cope with the... There, that's a bit better. Um, but this is a classic 80s little power suit that probably everyone wore to work. I'll put it on the mannequin. There we go, that's a good colour match. Absolute iconic statement suit. This one I've got to show you is absolutely wild. Emma Somerset. A real sort of a Kensington time, you know, when sort of Princess Diana was wearing her power suits. Um, you know, Kensington High Street, Knightsbridge, that whole scene. Uh, the Sloan Rangers. Um, this fabric is incredible. It's like mesh. It's like those chainmail mesh bags that you could get that were big in the 70s and 80s. It's, it's just really, really unusual. And the suit was made in America, but the fabric was made in Italy and it was sold in Kensington. So, you know that scene, the Sloan Ranger set. I had to put the light out because it's so shiny. It was dazzling. It's totally Patsy and Eddie, isn't it? Absolutely fabulous. She was either in marketing or high-end uh, lettings and sales. <laughs> Sweetie darling, divine. Is that giraffe or is that leopard or is that lynx print on a metallic shiny? mini pencil skirted power shoulder dream i see <laughs> fire i just even love the split oh god it's amazing absolutely amazing and just in case you've had too much bully dulling you don't even have to do your own buttons up press studs <laughs> It's quite heavy. It has a certain chainmail coat of armour about it. <laughs> oh, hi. I was looking for something with a little more ruffle. Do you have anything that's a little wider in the shoulder with more ruffle? Oh, that'll do very nicely. Thank you. Perfect amount of ruffle. And at the same time, over in Hong Kong, absolutely no ruffle whatsoever. And can you give me much less shoulder, please? <laughs> <laughs> this I found in um, a little tiny back street second hand shop in um, it's in Kowloon but it was way up past Sham Sho Po I think it was in Chang Sha Wa um, but let me tell you the story I'll just give you a close up first it's handmade it's silk it has the dress underneath um, obviously in the traditional style with no sleeves, but it's so tiny I can only pin it on to the mannequin, it won't fit. Uh, short sleeves, tiny little shoulders, uh, it's just exquisite. Okay, I'll sit down. There she is. I used to live in a place called Sham Sho Po in Kowloon in Hong Kong and I'd never been happier in my life. I felt I belonged there. It took me a long time to find that place and uh, I was ripped out of it by Brexit, but we've, we've moved on from that. Not really. <laughs> we haven't really moved on, but we have physically moved on, perhaps not emotionally or psychologically. However, I still have my little treasures from Hong Kong. And this I found in a really tiny, dark, 
just like packed back street charity shop and charity shops aren't really a thing in Hong Kong there were a few when I was there but I went back a couple of years I tried left and they'd all shut down really for modernization and gentrification uh, which I think personally is a is a real shame but I mean it's just you know that's life isn't it uh, so I found this in the dark in this tiny little back street shop and uh, I mean people don't really go to charity shops so it was a novelty for them to have first of all customers and secondly someone like me <laughs> foreigner <laughs> and they were so nice and uh, I just got used to search and search for vintage clothes there we go I think that's a bit better I put the light on and turned it towards me it's looking right at me hello um yeah, so that's one of my most treasured possessions when it comes to my vintage clothes, my collection. And there we go. I bought this new for myself from one of the fashion shops in Sham Shapo. I asked the lady in the shop if it was culturally acceptable for me to wear it. She said, absolutely, not a problem. As long as you wear it with respect. I said, absolutely, not a problem. Uh, everything I wear is with respect and it's just divine. Modern, obviously, but with that traditional classic Chinese embroidered floral design oh I love it so much that shape is so satisfying and it is a suit it's two pieces and underneath are some trousers with more embroidery let me go floral embroidery there we are and a modern twist on the traditional frog fastener pockets exquisite I love it and it's so timely it's like I planned this because we're coming up to Chinese New Year so a little bit in advance however can I wish everyone a, a happy 2023 and a happy prosperous coming up Chinese New Year yeah <laughs> this year is the year of the rabbit and I know that from my ring collection video the rabbit was a huge smash so I'm just looking for it <laughs> are you putting your look on it? Make it lucky. Go, go. So if you enjoyed this video, if you like listening to me ramble away, um, please like and subscribe. It would mean the absolute world, honestly.